Steve Penny is a full-time trader and investor specializing in the silver, gold, and uranium markets. He has been following the silver market for decades. This is what he says. There, there's always downside risk. Uh, and I've said this before, but I think it's especially true right now that especially in silver, downside risk is very small relative to the upside potential over the next few quarters. Um, the next support level, we, we lost key support at $21, $21.41 to be exact. So we dropped below that. The next support is at 1970. And then below there, you've got support between around 1850. So I, I see that as most likely a worst case scenario. I'm not predicting that we fall back that far, but that's the downside risk. Uh, which is only a couple couple dollars, but you know, I still think you know forty fifty dollars silver is coming in the next you know uh, let's let's call it year or so, um, if not sooner. So a couple things there that that is certainly possible if you get some kind of really quick spike low. But uh, I think it was like March sixteenth, two thousand twenty was that COVID spike low you talk about when we went down to eleven dollars, and that that was the paper price. But you couldn't really get physical metal for that cheap. The maybe physical fell to sixteen seventeen dollars or so, something like that. And that was very, very short-lived. That lasted a few days. So something like that is always an outside possibility as well. But I just can't see price staying below 1850 or so for more than you know a very, very brief period of time. The all-in sustaining cost for most of these mining companies is around $18, $19. And those, those input costs are rising with the price of uh, you know diesel and fuel uh, going up as well. So it's hard for a commodity like silver to stay below its cost of production for more than just a very, very brief period of time. But when you're in an environment like this, um, if, if you're looking, waiting for a dip, further dip to buy physical, often, you know, any drop in the paper price of silver is offset by an equal rise in the premiums. So, you know, it's hard to get silver for less than $20 for actually to get it, you know, physical silver in your hand that you can touch. Now, as for gold, what are you seeing there? Yeah, gold, gold has held. It's been more resilient than silver. Um, it did lose support. At its 200 day moving average. Um, but I've been saying from the beginning, I think you and I spoke when gold was up at 2078 on March 8th with that war premium at, at its peak, um, that, you know, we're, we're expecting a pullback. I wasn't expecting quite this much of a pullback, but as long as we make a higher high above 1780, we're in an uptrend. So gold is still in an uptrend. It may not feel like it, but that's what an uptrend is. It's higher highs and higher lows. So, uh, as long as 1780 holds gold remains in an uptrend. And I think that's very likely to, to hold. I think we're due for a sharp bounce. I'm not really looking lower. I've been accumulating aggressively here and even taking on some trading positions. Um, I, I can't wait to see today's commitment to traders report because it was starting to get pretty bullish in silver even last week. And then we've had, you know, it's been down for, you know, however many consecutive days. So I think the COT is going to be incredibly bullish. We're extremely oversold. Sentiment is down in the dumps. This is an environment where you could see a really quick uh bounce. So the question is going to be, if and when we get this bounce, is it a dead cat bounce where you come back and make a lower low? Or um, have we seen the worst of it? That that question remains to be answered. But I, I think, you know, we're, we're more than likely very closer, um, much closer to a bottom than, than any kind of top. That's for sure. I, I see them moving in opposite directions. So over longer periods of time, uh, gold and general equities have a very strong inverse correlation. And they, bull markets typically peak around a one-to-one -one ratio, Dow-Gold ratio, 1980. Dow dropped to 850. Gold rose to 850. There's your one-to-one -one ratio. Something similar happened in the 30s. And I think we're going to see that again over in the years ahead, not in the very short term. But yeah, I think gold is going to outperform general equities by a wide margin. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. That could, that could look a lot of different ways, um, depending on w what happens to the currency. In a uh, runaway inflation environment, you could see stocks continue to move higher, just gold moves up faster. Or uh, you know, stocks could pull back and gold rises and they meet in the middle. I'm not sure how that ratio looks, but I'm looking for that ratio to compress. Yep, I, I think the Fed is uh, is trapped, but I, I do think they're, they're going to reverse. I, I'm very confident that's going to happen. But, you know, I think they kind of wanted to let some air out of this bubble because the, by letting the stock, uh, you know, asset prices correct, not just stocks, but real estate, things like that, bonds, um, it kind of uh, it puts disinflationary pressures on the uh, economy so they can say, hey, look, inflation is coming down. Our policies are working. Um, so I think they're they're content a little bit, let some air out of this bubble. 
but at the same time, they don't want to crash on their hands either. So I, I think they're going to reverse course probably you know, in the next few months. September, October, November is, would be a good time frame for, uh, for that to happen. Stocks and the metals are the, the markets are forward looking. So I think before you hear about any kind of Fed pivot, uh, the markets are going to recognize that ahead of time, uh, specifically bonds and the metals. And then usually the stock market's the last to wake up. But I, I think all of them will probably you know reverse higher, even, including general equities. You know we're we're I think we're due for a bounce here, and, and uh, I, I think the markets will anticipate that Fed pivot. Real rates are still negative, but they've been trending higher, and the, the metals have responded accordingly, just like you said. You know, they've pulled back in, in accordance with those rising real rates, but they're still negative. And I, I don't think it's possible – well, I shouldn't say possible, but it's highly, highly unlikely that we get positive real rates anytime soon. If we did, you know, that's a sell signal for the metals, but I, I think that's highly unlikely because inflation is still north of 8%, and, you know, the 10-year is still at 3%. So that's – if you use that metric, there's different ways to measure it. That's still negative real rates of 5%, um, which is, you know, that's a tailwind for the metals. Uh, you know, could that gap narrow a little bit? Yeah, it could over the short term, but I don't think we're going to get to positive real rates anytime soon. Yeah, I, I love platinum right now. Um, it, platinum has pulled back to some key support right around $900. It's bounced. It's since bounced, but $900 is key support in platinum. Below there, you've got about $750 uh, as long-term support. Um, and I, I accumulate a little bit of platinum each month, and I'm happy to do so near these levels. Anything below a thousand dollar platinum, I think, is a gift if you've got a longer term time horizon. But um, yeah, you, you mentioned other markets. Not to go on a tangent, but to sum things up, interest rates are extremely overbought. The ten year is extremely overbought on the yield, up against major resistance around three point two percent on the yield. The dollar is extremely overbought against one hundred four resistance. So I think it's highly likely over the short term we see a reversal in those two things, those two assets. Meanwhile, silver, silver miners are extremely oversold uh, against support. So I think we're likely to see what's happened in the last few weeks kind of unwind here. But the question is, you know, is it is that a dead cat bounce or is it a trend reversal? So that that's the big question we'll have to watch for the next week or two. Reclaiming the 200-day moving average in uh, gold, silver, and some of the mining stock ETFs, that would be a a, a big indication that we've seen a trend reversal, the lows are in. Getting back above that 200-day will be the first step towards a technical reversal. Yeah, you're almost like you said, almost everything is pulled back. Uranium miners have pulled back too. I, I've i been content. I, I got in really early into that sector. So I've been content to just hold what I have. But I actually added last week for the – or this past week for the first time in quite a while. Um, some of these stocks like energy fuels, for example, that's kind of a bellwether. That one was up around $11.00. You know, just a month or a couple months ago, and it fell back into the five. So it was down by 50%. Um, and uranium, the actual metal, is above $50. So I, I think uh, for those looking to accumulate uranium miners, this is a really, this is a gift for those looking to accumulate. I think uranium is going a lot higher, and as those mining stocks have a lot of small ebook, big impact, the wealth tree, the only four ways that will make you financially free forever. Download it here for free 